welcome to Dates and Dead Guys. I am Miles Fisher, and I hope with these videos we can all learn something awesome about history. Today we're going to investigate the violent lizard murder of over a thousand Japanese soldiers way back in 1945 at Ramre Island. It doesn't seem like something that should be able to happen, but take a look at this. These things are fucking terrifying, so let's take a look. In mid-February 1945, Allied, British, and Indian forces invaded a small muddy island off the coast of Burma called Ramre. Using artillery and overwhelming force, the Japanese are forced to retreat into the island's extensive mangrove swamps. As night falls, the Japanese soldiers experience the rising of the tides in the mangroves. The water rises more than a few feet. 1,000 Japanese soldiers are now waist-deep in brackish water. As the tide comes in, so do the giant saltwater crocodiles, man-eaters that live in the mangroves. From outside the mangroves, Allied forces watch and listen. Bruce S. Wright, an Allied soldier, wrote, quote, The scattered rifle shots in the pitch-black swamp punctured by the screams of the wounded men crushed in the jaws of the huge reptiles and blurred the worrying sound of spinning crocodiles made a cacophony of hell that has rarely been duplicated on Earth. At dawn, the vultures arrived to clean up what the crocodiles had left, end quote. According to British Vice Admiral Arthur Power, over the course of the next two days, only 20 Japanese would emerge from the mangroves alive, with the rest killed or drowned. I honestly don't know where I heard this story first. I remember hearing it at a very young age. I'm pretty sure that I had an uncle at the time who just pulled me aside and was just like, you know, a thousand Japanese were killed in Southeast Asia by crocodiles in World War II? And as a little kid, I probably ate that shit up. I looked into it as an adult, and to some degree, it's actually kind of verified. So, in 1968, the Guinness World Records will claim that the Battle of Ramari Island was the greatest crocodile massacre in the history of the world. That a thousand Japanese soldiers met their death at the hands of these crocodiles at Ramari Island. To be fair, the Guinness Book of World Records does in fact make some outlandish claims and verify some records that are straight up absurd. Some of them I've listed here for you. I haven't verified any of these records, but it was written on the internet, so it's probably fine. The claim made at Ramray Island about crocodile deaths has actually been challenged for decades by both historians and wildlife experts. And if history teaches us anything, it's that if things feel a little bit fucky, they probably are. Here's some things that we do know. In January of 1945, British and Indian forces invaded the island of Ramre off the coast of Burma. The Allied forces wanted to take the island in order to build an airfield. An airfield would allow the army a place in order to supply materials to mainland Asia in the conflict. According to soldier Robert Duff's memoirs, quote, There was no landing place for ships, so we had to come in on the beaches. The Navy said they didn't know how we would get off the island, so it was a case of get rid of the Japs or be taken prisoner, end quote. I realize that this is a much smaller scale, but it kind of sounds like the D-Day invasion, where these commanding officers are pretty much like, listen, we're going to drop you off the beach. Hmm? Yeah, the enemy's there. What if you're overwhelmed? Well, figure it out. What if you get captured? Don't get captured. Try to go win. Go. Luckily, it went well for the good guys, and after a couple weeks of back and forth fighting, the Japanese were forced by the Allies to retreat into the mangroves. According to Duff, quote, We had some very hard fighting, but we managed to push the Japs to the swamp on the other side of the island, which was full of crocodiles. They decided to take their chances in the swamp rather than surrender. Only a handful came out alive, end quote. And the quote that you just heard from Duff really just echoes the quote previously from Vice Admiral Arthur Power. But let's take a look at the mangrove swamps and the Japanese that had to go into them. Welcome to the nature documentary part of the program. It occurs to me that many of us probably don't know what mangrove swamps are, so let's define it. Mangrove swamps are where fresh and saltwater meet. They are notorious for impenetrable vegetation and a landmass that becomes enveloped in the tides. This is the part that gets spooky. Japanese soldiers forced to retreat into the mangroves experience the water levels come up. As they do, they know already that there's been rumors of saltwater crocodiles in the area. And as the tides come in, they're not able to escape from the water. Darkness envelops them, and so does an eerie silence. 
You hear off in the distance the screams of fellow soldiers as they hear things brush by them in the water. One by one, people slowly start to disappear. The whole concept of being in this scenario, especially during nighttime, sounds absolutely horrifying to me. Think of the last time you actually went swimming in anything less than absolutely clear water. If anything touches you, you freak out. I was actually tackled by a stingray once at the beach. I was fine though, it didn't like Steve Irwin me. And to add credibility to the crocodile theory, it would appear that Allied soldiers were aware of the crocodile threat in the area. William Albert Waitman, a British soldier, spoke candidly about his experience in the jungle. He described it as an impenetrable mess, that there was constantly knee-deep mud, and there was even protocols in place when soldiers would cross rivers to avoid the attacks. Because there was a danger of experience what they called a mugger, or a crocodile attacking someone in chest-deep water, it was protocol for them to have someone stationed on the beach with a gun ready to save them just in case. The crocodiles accused in the attack are saltwater crocodiles. They're also called estuarian crocodiles, and the Australians lovingly call them salties. They are the largest member of the crocodilian family, with the average adult being about 17 feet long and sometimes weighing over a ton. It is absolutely wild that this animal exists in Australia, and it's not even close to the deadliest animal that they have there. Australia Geographic actually ranks them as the sixth most deadly animal in the area. This is not a video on the ridiculous continent that is Australia, but according to this publication, there are in fact five things there that are more deadly than the 17-foot, one-ton murder lizard. Saltwater crocodiles populate brackish water and freshwater regions of India, Southeast Asia, and Northern Australia. They are also opportunistic predators that like to ambush prey in the water or on riverbanks. Worldwide, crocodiles may kill a thousand people a year, which is way more than sharks. There is a whole week dedicated to sharks and those bitches kill like five people a year. The problem is, is that it's very scary because their faces are basically knives and when they do taste you, I'm sure it hurts a lot. The records of crocodile deaths could be a little bit off as well because the areas of the world where Nile crocodiles and saltwater crocodiles live, the primary man-eaters, don't keep the best statistics. Some experts think that crocodile deaths could be literally twice the reported number. The Northern Territory in Australia does keep pretty reliable statistics and they usually experience somewhere in the neighborhood of one to two saltwater crocodile deaths per year. I only bring that up because even though the numbers are low, they do publish hilarious public awareness campaigns. These campaigns are meant to prevent future tragedies and the full video is linked below, but here's what they try to put out. In the rivers of the sea, there were crocs unseen And now they're speaking small, then they're moving upstream Crocodiles are deadly, just remember that they're deadly If you're hanging around the water, you gotta use your head tea. Despite that video, crocodiles are in fact dangerous and I do not recommend them as pets. What we know so far about the Battle of Ramre is that A. Crocodiles are dangerous B. There are bunches of them in mangroves and C. There are tons of allied writings that point to that concept. Lieutenant General J.F.R. Jacob wrote, quote, Over a thousand of the Japanese garrison retreated into the crocodile-infested mangrove swamps. We went in with boats, asking them to come out. Not a single one did. Saltwater crocodiles, some of them over 20 feet in length, frequented these waters. It is not difficult to imagine what happened to the Japanese who took refuge in the mangroves. End quote. There's an exclamation point at the end of that quote, but I do think that it's probably better read solemnly than it is loudly assuming I do, in fact, know what solemnly means. Echo. Define solemnly. Solemnly is an adverb usually defined as in a solemn manner. That was not fucking helpful. Echo. Define solemn. The adjective solemn is usually defined as grave, sober, or mirthless, as a person, the face, speech, tone, or mood. Okay, I was right. Events like what took place at Ramre Island capture our imagination. Aside from the words though, is it actually supported by evidence? Or is it maybe kind of like the USS Indianapolis, where upon further scrutiny, the stories of shark attacks don't quite hold up? Crocodiles, however, are quite different from sharks. We did establish before that sharks are bitches. The crocodile hypothesis at Ramre Island has been challenged. Frank McLinn, who wrote the Burma Campaign, published in 2010 about that portion of the war, wrote, quote, There is a zoological problem. 
If thousands of crocodiles were involved in the massacre, as in the myth, how would these ravaging monsters survive before, and how were they to survive later? The ecosystem of the mangrove swamp, with its mammal life, simply would not have permitted the existence of so many saurians before the coming of the Japanese. End quote. McGlynn has a point. Animals like people can starve, and crocodiles don't eat that often. It doesn't seem likely that there were a thousand crocodiles in the ten miles of mangrove swamps on Ron Murray Island. It seems more likely that the writings of Allied soldiers generated a myth. It almost seems like a fishing story, where over the course of years it just became more grandiose, and rumors turned into fact, or what was accepted as fact. Regardless of crocodiles, only 20 Japanese ever emerged from the mangroves according to the Allied soldiers. So if it wasn't crocodiles, what happened to them? There are several theories. The first one has to do with the availability of water. Soldiers often wrote about how difficult it was to find water in the region. Mangroves are brackish. It's a mix of salt water and fresh water. You can't drink it. And the Japanese were in there for days. Arthur Power wrote about this too. He said, quote, Prisoners taken out of the mangroves during the operations were found to be in semi-dehydrated and very low physical condition, end quote. There are some reports of actual crocodile attacks, but the lack of drinkable water does seem to be a pretty likely culprit. On top of that, there's also disease. You don't have to get too far into studying World War II history in order to figure out the Japanese during that time were not so much big on surrender. One crazy statistic that I ran into this is that for the Allied forces, for every one surrender, there was three people that died. Whereas for the Japanese, for every one surrender, there was 120 that died. The ideas of dehydration disease make a lot of sense, especially if you take a look at starvation for the Japanese and how that might have played a role in both of those previous concepts during the latter stages of the war. One study suggested that in 1944 and 1945, as many as 60% of Japanese military deaths were due to result of malnutrition and what that accompanies, meaning disease. This is just an example to illustrate a point. But there was a Japanese soldier named Hiro Inoda who literally fought in the Philippines for 29 years after World War II had ended because he didn't know the war was over. That means that since the war ended in 1945, he fought until 1974. And it's not like he was alone. He had other people with him as recently as 1950 where one person defected in 1972 before another one did. During this time, he killed something like 30 Filipinos, and he later became a motivational speaker for children in Japan. The point, however, is that Japanese soldiers were insanely tough. And it's not out of the questions that when they went into the mangroves, before they were willing to surrender and come out, the majority of them died due to starvation, malnutrition, disease, and whatever other factors might have come into play. I think that the writing of Allied soldiers likely led to a myth of crocodile slaughter. Some writings even suggest that of the thousand Japanese soldiers that were trapped on Ramre, that a thousand were able to make it to mainland Burma. Vice Admiral Power sums it up best when he says, quote, To the Japanese that remained, there were only two alternatives, to stand and fight or to escape from the island by water. They chose the alternative, and in doing so, they met with disaster. End quote. Of the thousand Japanese soldiers stuck in the mangroves at Ramre, they likely met with disaster but mostly not from crocodiles. Thanks for watching.